All right, NASCAR driver Kurt Busch and his ex-girlfriend are making headlines in a rather bizarre legal case. Busch's ex, Patricia Driscoll, is not only known for trying to get her own reality show with this demo video, but she claims that Bush attacked her and she wants a restraining order. He says she is a trained assassin and that he is scared for his life. So, who to believe? Here's CNN's Andy Scholl. They can't accept me for who I am. Who's your daddy now? The assassin Angelina Jolie plays in the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith as a fictional character. But according to NASCAR superstar Kurt Busch, his ex-girlfriend Patricia Driscoll is the real-life version. While testifying in court over Driscoll's request for a no-contact order, Bush said Driscoll is a trained assassin who would go on covert missions around the world. The family court battle stems from a November incident where Driscoll claims that Bush assaulted her. The state attorney general is still investigating the case. Bush says it's a made-up lie after the relationship ended. I'm just glad that the truth got told and that we'll wait on the commissioner's decision. Bush says Driscoll had claimed that Jessica Chastain's character in the movie Zero Dark Thirty was partly based on her and other women working in counterintelligence. Bin Laden is there, and you're going to kill him for me. During court testimony, Bush told a story about one time when he and Driscoll were in El Paso, Texas. Bush said Driscoll once went out in camouflage gear only to return later wearing an evening gown covered with blood with a trench coat over it. Far-fetched? Maybe. But Bush is standing by his story on the stand saying, quote, everybody on the outside can tell me I'm crazy, but I lived on the inside and saw it firsthand. Driscoll is a senior executive of a company called Frontline Defense Systems, a security and intelligence consulting firm, and is described on the company website as having spent the majority of her career in the narcotics and intelligence world. Driscoll nor her attorney refuted the testimony during the hearing, but in a phone interview with the Associated Press, Driscoll said, these statements made about being a trained assassin hired killer are ludicrous and without basis and are an attempt to destroy my credibility. I find it interesting that some of the outlandish claims come straight from a fictional movie script I've been working on for eight years and that she says Bush has proofread. Such a wild story. Driscoll told ESPN on Wednesday that Bush needs professional help to deal with alcoholism and depression. Bush has not responded to those remarks. Okay, Andy Schultz, thanks so much. Okay, let's bring in our legal guys. Maybe they can sort this out. We won't have any music, though, behind. I love that music. Wasn't it very mysterious? All right, Avery Freeman, a civil rights attorney and law professor in Cleveland, and Richard Herman, a New York criminal defense attorney and law professor, joining us from Las Vegas today. Okay, so, um, Richard, you first. You know, what's the evidence likely that, you know, Ms. Driscoll says she needs a restraining order and that she's the one being harassed? The whole thing is absurd, Fred. It's ridiculous. <laughs> These people are nuts, and I don't know. It looks like a publicity stunt to me because it's absurd. A four-day hearing in family court for an alleged assault. This is what happens. He's in his trailer at a raceway. She, he says she scorned. She comes to his trailer. He asks her to leave. She got her 10-year-old son with her, by the way. She will right. not leave. There's some sort of altercation where she says he takes her and puts her head into the side of the wall there, and she finally leaves. There's no medical evidence. There's no criminal charges brought. Right. She then goes to family court and seeks a restraining order against him. He doesn't want her around him, yet she's seeking a no-contact order. And the absurdity of this whole thing is, is that there's no evidence of it. There's this whole thing about an assassin and the assassin defense. This is ridiculous. It's nothing to do with the facts and circumstances of the case. It's got to be a publicity stunt, Fred. It has to be. It's absurd. Do you think so, too, Avery? Well, I, I, from a legal perspective, I, I appreciate the <laughs> characterization of absurdity and ridiculous. Mm. But to me, look at, I think, you know, if you work at, you know, like, like Kurt Bush and you're, you know, uh, all you basically do is drive around in circles, maybe that got to him. But uh -oh, I do you're agree. Get some email called. <laughs> Easy. Oh you're done. I, Avery, I, you're I done. I do agree. <laughs> I do agree that, that um, the mm. idea of bringing a, a no contact claim or pursuit and it's a civil matter it's not criminal the lawyers could have agreed to something like that but they're now we're, we have a four-day show i agree with that part of it um what's so odd about this is the complaint was actually filed in september 
uh, the, uh, the incident allegedly occurred in September. The complaint was filed in November. The hearing started in December, and we're now in January. It's still not over. Hmm. So it is very odd in that respect. Bottom line is that if the burden is on the victim, then it seems to me that Ms. Driscoll has a real problem in meeting that burden of proof, mm -hmm. and, and I think this thing actually goes up in smoke. We actually agree, mm -hmm. but for different reasons. I know. I'm hearing that. Yeah. You're in agreement. Yeah. yeah. The absurdity, the further absurdity is if this order gets granted, this no contact order gets granted, and she gets upset, it's quasi-criminal, Avery, if she gets upset right. down the road and decides to call the police and say, he's bothering me, he came by my house, mm -hmm. They could go arrest him, so yeah, because not, it has no contact. Happen. It's pretty. It's I happen. hope it doesn't it's happen. happen. Let me I tell hope you why not. it's not going to happen. But it's, it's in family it's, court, the, the court, and the quality not. of judges in family court are like this. Most of them. So <gasps> oh, we'll see what happens you know what? here. Oh Richard, gosh! Richard, you can't right. attack you the that's entire how I see judiciary. It. That's based how I, I guess family your court. That's not family fair. court judges. That's, that's not all fair. I'm talking about. No, You're both going to get a barrage. Of some of them. Yeah, some of them. That's not fair. Not all. Not all. Some. I'm just the innocent bystander. Well, okay. It's good that you qualified it. Hey, hey, did I say Happy New Year, you guys? Hey, Happy New Year. Yeah, well, Happy New Year to you, Frederica. All right. Years, I know, years, and Fred. counting. I was thinking about that this morning. I'm like, we have been together a very long time. That's right. Ain't love, Grant. Way too long. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we'll <see you> <laughs> Appreciate it. Bye-bye. See you later. <laughs>